Good evening and welcome to our midweek Bible class. It's great to see everyone. Uh, please continue to pray for all those on our prayer list, especially those who are still recovering from surgery. Uh, we got uh, Miss Stephanie Gunn, um, Diane Holbrook, uh, Val Brown, as well as uh, Brother uh, Milford Segura. I know he's been going through uh, having uh, radiation treatment. Please keep the following in your prayers. Um, Milan Dillegard, she tested positive for COVID today. So let's keep her in the family in our prayers. And of course, Diane Holbrook and as well as Jean Morris, um, they were ill last week and uh, they're not here today. So let's keep them in our prayers. As well as Gregory and uh, Sonia Howard, um, they have a mild case of COVID-19. And once again, Val Brown, she had a procedure on her back back on the 15th and uh, she's home recovering. Also, keep Brother Jim Fullman uh, in your prayers. He will likely be receiving radiation treatment in the, at some time in August. Uh, friends and family that need our prayers, uh, Bonnie Sells, this is the mother of Stephanie Johnson. She is recovering from hip surgery. Uh, she is in rehab located down in Tampa, Florida. Uh, Brother Skip Jackson, um, who is on a long-term sick list, uh, had a stroke back on June the 13th, so let's keep Brother Skip in our prayers that he have a, a, a speedy recovery. Clint Childers, a former member here, has a mild case of COVID. Uh, Mia Stinger, Stringer, this is the brother, sister Cooper's son-in-law sister, is improving in consideration uh, to remove uh, life support um, in a, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Uh, Edie and, uh, excuse me, Eddie and uh, Robbie uh, Threadgill, this is the brother and sister-in-law of Pat Berry. Um, Robbie is very ill and uh, Eddie is, uh, is physically unable to take care of her. So please send cards of encouragement and the address is posted on our website. Also, please continue to pray for our law enforcement, military, medical staff, as well as first responders during these challenging times. We have a scheduled wedding shower it's on uh, July the 31st, that's a Sunday. We'll be here at the building. Uh, the time is at 4 p.m. The shower is for Ross Mahan and Catherine Corbett. Uh, the couple is registered at Target, Bed and Bath, uh, Bed, Bath and Beyond, Crate and Barrel, and Pottery Barn. We are continuing with our summer series. Uh, the theme is Lord Grant Us Wisdom. Our guest speaker tonight is Brother uh, Nick Adams. Uh, he preaches at the West Side Church of Christ in Griffin, Georgia. He's here with his family, uh, his wife, uh, Casey. Uh, their children is Carly, 13, Cole, 12, Canaan, 10, Caleb, 8, Camille, 4, and Connor, 20. Uh, he is not here. He's working at Hobby Lobby. It says here, Nick has a passion for serving first responders and volunteers as chaplain as often as he can. Well, brother, we look forward to your message tonight. Uh, that's all the announcements, and we'll be led in opening prayer. Good evening. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we are so thankful for this opportunity to come out again midweek and study a portion of your word again. And Father, we thank that you sent Nick and his family uh, to be with us tonight, and we we look forward to the message that you have that he's given us on wisdom. And we pray that the things that he uh, teaches tonight, that we'll be able to use them and put them in our walk with you daily. And Father, this evening, we are mindful of all those on our prayer list. And particularly at this time, we're going to uh, mention Milan Dillegard as she's uh, re recovering from COVID. And also Sonia and uh, Greg Howard as they too recover from uh, COVID. And we want to pray for uh, Jim Fulmer as he has... Uh, some negative results for some tests, and he's uh, coming up for some uh, procedures. We just pray all will go well with him in those procedures. And Father, we want to pray for all of those in our prayer list that are suffering at this time from different ailments and different hardships and those that have lost loved ones, those who are ill. And we just lift them all up to you, Father. Pray that you would uh, give them peace and comfort during this difficult time. Father, we pray for our leaders and the uh, the congregation here, we pray that you continue to bless them and give them the wisdom they need to lead your congregation. Father, we also pray for the leaders of our country, those in, on the uh, local level here. The, we pray for them and we pray for those on the state and also on the federal level. Father, we pray for them that you would give them the wisdom that they need to lead in a godly manner. Father, we pray that you will continue to be with us, guide us, keep us in your holy hand, and it's through Christ we pray. Amen. Song tonight is stand. 
standing on the promises. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let His praises ring. Glory in the highest I would shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises, standing on the promises, standing on the promises of God my Savior. Standing on the promises, standing on the promises. I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises that cannot fail. When the hollow storms of doubt and fear assail, by the living word of God I shall prevail, standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises, standing on the promises, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing on the promises, standing on the promises. I'm standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises of Christ the Lord, bound in an eternal blood and bones of war, overcoming daily with the spirit sore, standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises, standing on the promises. Standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing on the promises, standing on the promises. I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises, I cannot fall. Listening every moment to the Spirit's call. Resting in my Savior as my all in. Promises of God, standing on the promises, standing on the promises, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing on the promises, standing on the promises, I'm standing on the promises of God. I'm thankful for this opportunity to be with you tonight. I think it was maybe three years ago that I was able to speak here before. And uh, glad to be back. I don't think most of the kids even remember coming because it's been a while. In John chapter 8 and verse 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. John earlier in the book, in John chapter 1, verses 4 through 9, explains that the, the world was in darkness until Jesus came. And at that point, the true light came into the world. Before that, the light truly did not exist. As, as long as He was in the world, the light was in the world. We see in John chapter 9 and verse 5. And... The thing is, Jesus was not in the world for a very long time. Not as, not as lifespans go. Jesus didn't spend a lot of time in the world. And in fact, when the time would come for Him to leave the world, He made a promise that He would leave the light. That the light would not, uh, would not leave. He says that as long as you uh, follow me, you will not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. So the light would stay after Jesus left. Now in Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16, Jesus said this to his disciples. He said, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Just as Jesus came to the earth and, and let His light shine, 
He has called for His disciples to do the exact same thing. If we are to be followers of Christ as His disciples today, then we have to follow Him. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 21 says that. So to follow Him today means that we have to let our light shines, uh, our lights shine, excuse me, and be the light in the world today. I don't know uh, much about Conyers. I don't know this area very well. In Griffin, things are, are not really great right now. It seems like every, and we're not a huge town, uh, but every few days there's another shooting, another murder, another killing. And I think we're, what, somewhere around, Sp all of Spalding County is somewhere around 60,000 people. I imagine it's probably worse here. But it, sometimes it's hard to be a light in the world that we're living in, especially in times of increasing darkness that we see ourselves kind of slipping into now. But I want to leave you with one final thought from John. In 1 John chapter 1 and verse 7, he says this, If we walk in the light as He is in the light, then we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ His Son cleanses us from all sin. We have two aspects here of our lives as Christians. And as we extend the invitation, I just want to ask these two things. Are you walking in the light so that you can have your sins forgiven? And are you letting your light shine so that you can point the way to Jesus for other people? Jesus has called us to do both. And so tonight, if you have never obeyed the gospel, you have the opportunity to do that, to take on Christ in baptism, having your sins forgiven. You can uh, come forward tonight if you are a Christian and need to repent of your sins, need to confess those sins. If there is any way that you can be helped tonight, please come while we stand and sing. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood. If you'd like to open your Bibles, we're going to be in Proverbs chapter 1. I probably should have tried to go first because this is going to be kind of an introductory uh, type of thing as you'll see in a few minutes, but it'll work out just fine. Let me start by asking you a question. 
And I hope you all are, are ready to talk because my favorite part about teaching Bible class is the interaction. So uh, let me ask you this question. It doesn't have to be a biblical proverb. It can be any type of proverb. But if you had to choose one proverb by which to live your life, what proverb would you choose? I'll give you some, some suggestions while you think. Uh, if you want something done right, do it yourself. How about that one? Uh, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Might be one that, that some of us men choose. Uh, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. That's a good biblical one. Good things come to those who wait. Uh, I want to hear some of your thoughts. If, if, you, if you were to pick one proverb, what would it be? Okay, I like that one. It's best to be, uh, it's best to be quiet and be thought of as a fool only with one problem that brings all down. That is a very good one. <laughs> that, that is a good one. If we thank God for the good things, there wouldn't be times when we go with the bad. That's a really good one. That's a really good one. I had a whole bunch more written down just in case nobody wanted to talk, but... Uh, but uh, I, can, I can skip those. Uh, thank you for your input. Now, let's change course a little bit. Now, if you had to choose one proverb from the Bible, what would that proverb be? Uh, here are some suggestions that, that, I, that I pulled out. Uh, Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 22 is a good one. It says that one... Uh, actually... I didn't put that in my notes. I'm going to flip to these. If you want to flip with me, Proverbs 15, 22. Without counsel, purposes are disappointed, but in the multitude of counselors, they are established. So this one tells us that it's good to get advice from many different people. We don't want to just pick one person, uh, this is obviously not talking about Jesus, but not pick just one person to, to uh, consult, but have many opinions, advice from a multitude of people before we go on with our, our plans. I think that's a good one. Uh, chapter 16, Proverbs 16 and verse 9 is another one. A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. I think this, uh, this, Making this your, your one proverb for life might would uh, help bolster your confidence in God, give you more confidence in Him. But uh, there are other proverbs that we could choose from. There, there are some proverbs that we have in, in this book that, that really might not make a lot of sense. Proverbs chapter 16, again, and verse 33 this time. The lot is cast into the lap. But the whole disposing thereof is of the Lord. What does that mean? Well, uh, should we as Christians always uh, pick straws to make decisions? That's what casting lots is, is kind of like. One thing I want us to understand here as we get into this study and get into other studies in the book of Proverbs is that a proverb is something that is generally true. Is not always true in every situation. And that is something that we have to understand. For example, uh, if we use a modern proverb, many hands make light work. That is something that is generally true. If I'm in the kitchen helping my wife with supper, our many hands make the, the chore of cooking for eight people a little bit easier. But if our four-year-old comes in and starts helping, then those many hands actually slow down the process. And so it is not something that is necessarily to be read as a universal truth, but rather something to be understand as understood as a general truth. And this is how we need to look at the Proverbs, because not one proverb is really going to be good for every situation, though I think we have a good contender here in chapter 1. Uh, but if we don't take this 
method, some of the Proverbs are going to confuse us. Like uh, Proverbs 26 and verse 9, like a, thorn bush in a, like a thorn bush in a drunkard's hand is a proverb in the mouth of a fool. We have to, to be careful the way we use the Proverbs and see them for what they are, these general truths. Uh, maybe someone has uh, quoted a proverb uh, at you at some point in your life and not for you or to you. And uh, these things can be misapplied. They can, they can hurt. They can be misused. But there is a proverb in this book that is so important and on its own, it is always good all of the time. And we're going to look at that tonight. So, as we get into Proverbs chapter 1, there are four questions that we are going to answer tonight, should we have time. Uh, number one, we're going to talk about what a proverb is. Maybe you've already discussed that in depth, I, I don't know. Why the Proverbs are so important. Who is Proverbs for and what is the big idea of Proverbs? So let's start with uh, letting the text answer these questions for us. Let's start in uh, chapter 1 and verse 1. He says, The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. So, these first seven verses that we're going to cover tonight, uh, that's our, our goal, is to get through the first seven verses. And the, the first seven verses of this book are kind of like a, a preamble, a, an introduction, if you will. Preamble is not a word I use very often, but it means an introductory remark. And that's what the first seven verses is. It's his opening statement, his explanation of what he is doing. And so, the book of Proverbs introduces itself and really explains what a proverb is in these verses. And so it starts with verse 1 that we just read. The word proverb comes from the Hebrew word mashal, and it means uh, a short, pithy statement. Something that is easy to remember. And uh, the exact same word in the Hebrew can also mean to rule or to govern. So we get the idea that a proverb is a short statement that we use to govern our lives, uh, use to, uh, to rule or govern our lives. So with that in mind, I propose this definition to you of what a proverb is. Proverbs are basic or brief. Proverbs are brief poetic sayings meant to teach us wisdom. And that's how we should see these things. Now, maybe you've uh, heard someone say something before that was, was brief and, and poetic, and you thought, man, that's, that's really good. And uh, I remember seeing a, a video a while back of Keanu Reeves. Uh, he's an actor, for those of you that may not know who he is. He's an actor, and he was being interviewed by someone, and they asked him what happened, uh, what he thought happened to people when they died, uh, what, what would happen after death. And he sat back, he took a deep breath, he kind of shook his head, and he said, well, I know that the ones who love us will miss us. And that's, that's all he said. And then the guy that was interviewing him uh, shook his hand and, and uh, was impressed by it, but there's not much there, but it, it kind of sounded like a proverb, right? It was something short, it was something memorable, it was something that would stick with the people that would listen, it was poetic. That is the idea of what a proverb is. But it's really beyond that when we look to this book. Because the proverbs that we have for us that we are talking about in this summer series have something very special that they are trying to convey, and that is the wisdom of God. There's only one place that we can go for the wisdom of God, and that is to God's Word. So we pay special attention to these things. Now, the Hebrew word for wis wisdom is hakma. And at the most basic level, that word means the skill of learning. The skill of learning, or the skill of living, excuse me. But it's not just any kind of living, uh, like 
living for the weekend or, or, or living for your bank account. It's a special kind of living. It's living specifically to please God. Living with, with pleasing God as your goal in life. And so it's living the way that He has designed us to live. Living out the purpose that He has given to us. And wisdom is living a life that honors God every single day. Wisdom is knowing how to have a good marriage. Which, which God said we can have if we do it His way. It's, it's being able to know how to be a good parent, which God tells us how to do in a way that, that honors Him and uh, is good for our child. When, uh, wisdom is knowing how to use money thoughtfully. Wisdom is a, a politician or government official who who governs justly and doesn't worry about, about where their money is coming from and how they can further that cause. Wisdom is knowing the right thing to say and when to say it and maybe even when not to say it. Wisdom has so much depth and it helps us to navigate the, the big, important, high-stake decisions in life but it also helps us make the, the small, everyday choices that matter so much when compounded over the long run. So, verse 1 attributes these, these Proverbs, especially these first Proverbs. We know there were more writers than, than just Solomon. But the, it attributes these first Proverbs to Solomon, David's son. He was... Uh, the son of the most famous king that Israel probably ever had. His son became king at an early age. And when he became king, Solomon offered a great sacrifice to the Lord. A thousand burnt offerings. 1 Kings chapter 3 and verse 4. And so God appears to Solomon and asks him in a dream what he could give him. We know what Solomon asked for. Solomon asked God to give him wisdom to rule over his people. And what a, a great thing that that was that he wanted. It pleased God so much that he gave him what he asked for and he gave him the things he didn't ask for. He gave him wealth. He gave him honor and prestige. And then right after this, the Bible starts demonstrating Solomon's wisdom. And I think that, that uh, the story where the two women come to him and, and they're disputing over the child and Solomon comes up with the plan to, and of course he wasn't going to do it, he was using wisdom here, but he comes up with the plan to cut the child and divide the child between the two mothers, right? That plan that Solomon came up with was godly wisdom. That was not something natural. That was something that was given to him specifically by God. And... I think that that demonstrates what we want to achieve. Now, this is not going to be something supernatural. It's something we're going to have to, to work and strive for. But this is something that, that is something we want. This is the skill of living for God in our lives that we are looking for. Any, any comments or questions on that, uh, that first question there? All right, let's move on to our second question, and that is why Proverbs? Let's look at verses 2 through 4. To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. Now there's a lot to unpack in these, these three verses. But uh, let me ask you a question. What is one of the most often prayer requests that you offer to God on behalf of your children? Is it wisdom? It's, it's one of mine, and my kids are still pretty young. But uh, what about for yourself? Do you pray often for wisdom? What about for your, your leadership in this congregation or for 
the President of the United States? Do we pray that they will gain wisdom or, or be blessed with wisdom? We all need wisdom. Whether we are a child or the President of the United States and everyone in between, we all need more wisdom. And we all need to be seeking wisdom. Wisdom. We need to know how to live our life the way that God designed us to live it. And that only comes through wisdom. And so verses 2 through 6 here gives us the, the purpose statement of this entire book. This is why these Proverbs were inspired of God and put into this book. It's contained for us right here. It tells us why Solomon and the other authors the, compiled this book of wisdom sayings. And so, when we read and study the Proverbs, we do it in order to gain some of this wisdom. The wisdom of people that have come before us. And, and verses 2 through 4 really expand our understanding of what wisdom is by using similar words that really broaden the definition for us. So let's look at, uh, at specifically the words that all kind of, kind of go together there. Let's start with instruction. And that is the Hebrew word musar. I don't speak Hebrew. I might be mispronouncing some of these words, but I think it's Musar. Uh, when we think of instruction, we think of going to class, of going and somebody lecturing us, kind of like we're doing now, and listening to someone who, who may be an expert and, and someone that, that has something that you want to gain, some piece of knowledge that you can take away. And this word has a very serious tone to it, it can mean discipline, it can mean correction, it can actually mean punishment. Uh, this instruction can include verbal rebukes, uh, correcting someone in that way. It can be a physical punishment, like my boss gave me a firm instruction on how I was wrong, or my dad instructed me with swift punishment. It, it can mean this type of thing. So when we think about instruction, and, and especially the question of why Proverbs, even though it's never fun, we need instruction. We need rebuke. We need correction. We need teaching. We need these things. And the book of Proverbs offers us that correction. It gives us a lot of things to, to, to keep in mind while we are trying to live our lives and it, it pulls us back onto the right path when we stray. Understanding is the next word we need to look at because this is a, an important one too. This word describes a, a depth of knowledge. It's, it's more than just being aware of something. This is when you start to... I remember, I remember the first time that I, I preached. Uh, I just... I don't know. I, I don't remember exactly how old I was. I think I was in my early 20s. Me and this other guy were going to, to split the... Uh, the, the time. So he was going to preach the first 15 minutes and then I was going to preach. And so he got up there. He was a student at Freed Hardeman, home on break. He was a couple years younger than me and he just did a fantastic job. Looked like he was born preaching. I got up there having to follow him and this is what I did. If you need to respond to the invitation, come now. And then I fell. And my dad, who was sitting on the front row because he was leading singing, had to run up there and catch me to keep me falling off the stage. Now, when I get to preaching school some years later, my, my instructors there in school are telling me the whole time, you know, you might want to choose a different career path. I don't think that you're cut out. I don't think you can do this every week. You just, you just don't have it in you. And... I come to find out later that a lot of that was confidence in the message that I was trying to, to give to people. The more confidence we have, the more understanding that we have, a task becomes easier. 
And so the more that I learned in school, the easier preaching got for me. The, the nerves started to settle. I was confident in what I was telling people. I knew that people weren't going to listen to me, and, and if they died that night, end up in the wrong place. And so preaching became so much simpler. And this is so important. We perceive something. We need to be able to discern something. And that is a big part of, of, of understanding there. I understand how to use a tape measure. I understand how to use a hammer. I understand how to use nails. My understanding of that is, is, is fairly shallow compared to somebody who has been doing uh, construction every day for 30 or 40 years. Now, I can build some stuff, but my understanding of it is still quite shallow compared to some people. But if you, you ask some people, how do you use a tape measure, how to use a hammer, how to use nails, then they're going to be able to tell you a lot more about that subject. Why? Because they're an expert. This is what they do to make a living. And so, why Proverbs? When it comes to our spirituality, we do not want to be shallow people. We want to be deep people in spiritual things. We want to be confident people in the Word and in what it means to live life as a Christian. Proverbs will give us the understanding to do that. We want to get it. We want to have a deep understanding of how life works. We get that through Proverbs. Next is knowledge. Do, do I go straight up to, uh, to 8 o'clock? Oh, good. All right, because we're going to need that time. Knowledge. This means, obviously, to know something. Wisdom is not the exact same thing as, as knowledge or intelligence. It can include those things, of course, but you don't have to have a high IQ to be a wise person. And uh, you can be great at Jeopardy, let's say. You can be great at math. You can be, be great at science and, and many different things, but you can be a horrible person. Those things are not what makes a wise person. A wise person is so much deeper than that. You can have the largest intellect in the room, but not recognize things that are right in front of you. And so we need to understand that IQ is not everything. Wisdom does require knowledge. It requires knowledge of situations. It requires knowledge of yourself. And most importantly, it requires knowledge of God. But we do not have to be the smartest person in the room to be the wisest. Now, as a, a church, we can all have Bible knowledge and uh, all the Bible knowledge in the world even, but if we don't know how to put those things to practice in our everyday lives, then what's the point? I, have an, I had an uncle, he passed away, uh, unfortunately, before he ever made his life right with God. I never went into, my, into his house my entire life when there was not a Bible open somewhere. He read the Bible, he knew the Bible as good as anyone. But do you know why he studied that Bible? to try to prove that it was wrong, to try to prove that it was inaccurate, to try to prove that there were contradictions and fallacies. He knew the Bible better than any preacher I've ever known. But all of that Bible knowledge isn't helping him one bit. It didn't help him while he was on this earth, and it's not going to help him now for eternity. And so we have to know how to use the the. Bible in our lives. We can know uh, all of the, the Bible trivia. We can answer questions all day long, but if we aren't worshiping God correctly, if we aren't uh, building relationships with Him and with other Christians, if we aren't growing as disciples, if we're not loving our neighbors as ourselves, if we're not caring for the, the poor and destitute, uh, we're missing the point. So Paul warns us in 1 Corinthians Chapter 8 and verse 1, knowledge, knowledge puffs up while love builds up. Everything we learn about God 
needs to go into practice in our lives. And we need to be using it. Why Proverbs? Because we want the knowledge necessary to act wisely. There's one more word in here that describes wisdom, and that word is righteousness, sedek. Uh, or there's three other words, excuse me. Righteousness, justice, which is mispat, and fairness, meserim. And when you understand how to live God's way, when you have the knowledge to do it, when you have friends and, and family who are willing to correct you when you step out of line, the outcome is going to be right, it is going to be just, and it is going to be fair. Words that we see here in this text. There's a, there's a social aspect to wisdom, I think. Uh, wisdom is going to help me to treat my co-workers, my, my neighbors, my, my family members the way God wants me to treat them. I'm going to be able to treat them with dignity and respect. I'm going to have a better relationship with them because of wisdom. Wisdom helps me save... Uh, I have a sentence in here in my notes that does not make sense. So... It helps me to be more thoughtful. It helps me to, to be more, more generous in my interactions with people. And it helps me to have better relationships. So why Proverbs? Because it helps me get past surface level knowledge to, to develop real depth. It helps me to, to love my neighbors and it gives me a better relationship with God. Any comments on number two? All right, number three. Who is Proverbs 4? Let's, uh, I know we read 2 through 4. I want to pick up verse 4 again. And this time we're going to go down through, through verse 6. To give subtlety to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion... A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels to understand a proverb and the interpretation, the word of the wise and their dark sayings. Who is Proverbs for? Maybe a better way to ask this question would be, who is wisdom for? Do you want wisdom? I don't think anybody's going to shake their head no to that. So if we do, if we honestly, truly want to know how to live life the way that God intends, the Proverbs is going to tell us that. So Proverbs is for everyone. Proverbs is, is for every single person. It casts a wide net. If you're, if you're simple, so neither foolish nor wise, then Proverbs is for you. If you're young, the first nine chapters is written like a father writing to his son, giving him counsel. He says, my son, over and over again, if you're a teenager or a young adult, a guy or a girl, Proverbs has something for you. And all of it will probably apply to you in one situation or another. Or if you're wise already, and you're already discerning, so discerning that you have your own, own uh, genre of wisdom, let's say, then guess what? Proverbs is for you still. Proverbs is for everyone. We're not going to need all the time, I thought, but we're going to finish right on time. Let's get into number four. What is the big idea of Proverbs? I uh, said that there might be one proverb that could really uh, uh, be that proverb you live your life by. And at the end of this introduction here, I think we find the key verse for the whole book of Proverbs. It's a verse that's, that's theme is going to come up again and again through the Proverbs. And once we read it, you're going to know that. Verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. 
The more you get through this study this summer, the more you're going, if you haven't already, the more you're going to see the fear of the Lord come up throughout the book of Proverbs. Everyone is already thinking about uh, Solomon's other writing, Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13, right? So we know that the fear of the Lord is important. And if you had to choose one proverb to live your whole life by, this would not be a bad one. When we think about the depth of what this is saying, in fact, I hope this would be mine if I could only choose one. Wisdom begins with the fear of the Lord. I'll ask you a question and and feel free to answer. What does it mean to fear the Lord? Respect, reverence. Okay. Let's uh, take a look at a couple of verses. Those are both exactly right. Let's look at, uh, go to the book of Psalms, uh, Psalm 19. We're going to look at a few verses here. Let's start with verse 1. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth His handiwork. Let's look at verses 7 through 9 as well. The law of the Lord is perfect converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgment, judgments of the Lord are true and righteous all together. So, what this means to fear the Lord, reverence, respect, that's absolutely right. It means that, that you, chapter uh, Psalm 19 and verse 1, that you really believe in God's promises, that His promises are secure, His threats are real. You take His words in Scripture seriously, verses 7 through 9. You take this command seriously, uh, everything that He says to you. You understand that, that God has designed the world a certain way. That you, if you live life the way that God has designed for you to live, then things are going to go well for you. But if you disobey, if you step outside of God's parameters for your life, then there are going to be consequences. Another way to to say all that would probably just be reverent obedience. That is the fear of the Lord. Being obedient to God's commands is not really enough. Reverence is not necessarily enough. Reverent obedience is the fear of the Lord. When we obey God because of our love and our respect and our awe for Him. That is the fear of the Lord. And so, it's not just fear and and reverence of any God though. This is something that is, is very important. It's fear and reverence of our God. Do you see in your Bible, and of course you've, you've known this uh, for a long time, but uh, the word Lord is in uppercase, that signaling that, that God is, 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 it's his, that he's special, that he is uh, different. It's, it's uh, a name that uh, he gave his people Israel to identify himself with. You see this in some In some uh, translations, it's the tetragrammaton here that's used, the W, Y, W, H, W, or something like that, that it's it's used. Yahweh, we we typically say. And so, this is a, a fear and reverence that is based on relationship. And this is what is so important here. It's... Kind of like a, a relationship with you and your children. You know, sometimes you, you tell your kid to do something and you can tell that they're, they're obeying just because they know they have to. 
just because they're about to get punished or disciplined if they don't obey you. And then there's times when you look into that kid's eyes and you know that that child would do anything to please you. That's the, the child that God wants. That's the child that He wants us to be. And so this fear and reverence that is being talked about here is something that is based on relationship. We have to have a right relationship with Him. It's, it's uh, that fear of a young boy that he has of his loving Father. He knows that if he does something wrong, he's going to be corrected, but that, that his Father loves him no matter what and that his Father would never hesitate to lay down his life for him. This is the relationship that we have with God. And so, we're actually getting done early. If y'all have any comments, we'll have time for them. As we think about the God of the whole Bible, and we remember that He is going to correct us when we, when we step out of line, that... that At the same time, He loves us enough that He gave His Son for us. This should be that motivation. This should be the motivation that is, is going to strike fear. Give you that reverent awe that you need in your heart. In my heart, wisdom begins with the fear of the Lord. And that is the key to all of Proverbs. Starting with the fear of the Lord. Everything starts with that reverent obedience of God. Any questions or comments? Well, then uh, I have... Nothing further. I'm just going to throw my papers around for the rest of the, the time. Well, thank you very much for your attention. Yes, ma'am, it is. And, you know, this advice... This advice probably came at the end of his life when uh, most people suppose that he did uh, make a turnaround and uh, was trying to caution his, uh, his son to not make the same mistakes as him. But you're right. Uh, he had all of that wisdom and, and made very poor choices. And so, again, true wisdom starts with the fear of the Lord. Can we... Can we Detour from the track at times? Absolutely, we can. Thank you. But the main thing is that Solomon didn't take it back. Sure. And that's the thing for us. You know, we can stumble along the way, but we need to have that wisdom to realize that I need to go back home. Yes, sir. Put the Lord, the Lord first. That's right. It's uh, as long as we're as long as we're still here, there's always time. Well, thank you for your attention. Oh, yes. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that you have blessed us with tonight to, to be in your word, to talk about wisdom and how to better serve you. We thank you for this opportunity for us to come and... and uh, meet new Christians to us, to, to be able to fellowship with them and to, to help each other grow closer to you. We pray that as we leave here tonight, you will keep us all safe as we travel back to our homes. And we pray that you be with those in the community that are, are uh, serving as first responders, that are serving as police officers, firemen, EMT, dispatch, all of these people who are in... Uh, hard jobs in hard times. We pray that you be with them, protect them, keep them safe. Above all things, we pray that your will be done. 
In Jesus' name, amen.